So, if you're thinking of coming and volunteering working at Pioneer Christian Hospital, it might be a little intimidating to think of coming to Africa, if, especially if you haven't traveled before. But we just want to let you know that we'll take care of you every step of the way. Uh, you'll fly into Brazzaville, and as you can see, we have vehicles that are ready to pick you up and bring you to our guest house, which is where we, we are right now. And as you can see, we have 24-hour guards. There's guards here um, all hours to make sure everything is protected and safe. We have a hostess who lives here on the compound and she will prepare meals for you and make sure your room is ready and everything is, is good. That's where we are right now at Bravo Guest House. So I'd like to invite you to come on in and take a look. So this is our guest house, Bravo house, and uh, we have a living area and uh, offices for the hospital. The nonprofit organization that runs the hospital has headquarters here. And um, so when you fly into Brazzaville, we'll bring you to Bravo house and you'll spend a night or two here and then typically fly in the morning from Brazzaville to Infondo, which is only a one hour flight on a Boeing 727. It's 700 kilometers or it could be two hours in the turbo prop plane that is run by Air Congo. The other option, which we don't prefer, but is possible, is to drive. And it takes two days, minimum two days. It's usually a 12 hour drive on a mostly paved road up to Wesso. And then the next day, another 12 hours of driving all on dirt roads, logging trails through the forest to Infondo. We prefer that you fly, that's the way it normally happens, because that's a lot easier for you and us. So here we are on the back porch of Bravo Guest House, and it's just a comfortable place to be, um, to relax from your long air flight to get here to Brazzaville. So you can relax and we'll have a meal for you, and it's just a place if you'd like to enjoy some, some downtime before you make the trip to the hospital. So we have had this guest house since 2008. Um, it was the headquarters for Doctors Without Borders and when they left we were able to take it over and it's a great location. The roads are, we're really close to the airport, like within 10 minutes you're from the airport you're here and the roads are paved and smooth and it's secure and you can just relax. You can just be here and not worry about anything. We'll feed you, we'll give you a bed and um, going up to the hospital. So that's really important to us and we've, we've really um, made an effort to keep this, uh, keep it up and keep it. Um, we are in an expensive part of town so it's, it's a little hard to, to keep it but it's a priority to us because um, we want you to feel welcome and safe and take that uh, unknown out for you. So we see this as a, as a pivotal place as well because it's where, it's our headquarters. Um, we're far from the capital and we really need a business manager, someone here who can buy supplies for us, ship medicines, um, do all, pay bills, just it's really important to have a presence here in the capital. So this is, as well as a guest house, it's our headquarters for Pioneer Christian Hospital. Uh, so it's really, um, it's, a, it's an important place. So tomorrow we will leave here and as promised we will make the drive up to Infano because right now we're in uh, COVID restriction time and there's no flights going to Infando during this time. That's not normally the case, but since there are no flights, we're going to take a drive.
Greetings, welcome to Pioneer Christian Hospital, Hôpital Evangelique Le Pionnier. We're glad to be with you today. We're going to give you a quick tour of the hospital. So when you come in the gates of Pioneer Christian Hospital, first there's a security check. And we check in with the security services. And of course at this time uh, we do also do screening or pre-triage at the Gary. So we'll just check your temperature and make sure you don't have a fever. If you do have a fever, it'll be you'll call on the radio to the nurse in charge of uh, triage. They'll come out and isolate you until we can determine the cause of your fever. We also have the hand washing station all over the hospital where we wash our hands on a regular basis, often. So, uh, this is. When you come in the front gates, uh, here on the right is the administration building where the doctors have their offices and the administration staff are working for the administration of the hospital. We begin every day with a chapel service and then we have a staff uh, morning report in, in the conference room here in administration. So every morning we begin with morning report here in the conference room, going over the cases of any patients that have been admitted tonight at night or the night or any new cases or any new developments with our inpatients. So here we are in front of the hospital chapel. As you can see, it's a mural of the story in the Bible of Mark, chapter 2, verses 1 through 12, which is uh, presented here. Jesus is in a house, and it's so full of people who've come to be with him that there's no room to get in. So the man who's paralyzed has some friends who bring him to the house and open the roof and drop him in so that he can be at the feet of Jesus. And Jesus' reaction when he sees the man is, Son, your sins are forgiven you. Pick up your bed and walk. So this story really captures the essence of what the ministry here at um, Pioneer Christian Hospital is. We know that when Jesus is somewhere, when Jesus is in the house, people are drawn and want to come to where he is. And we are, it's our prayer that that's what it's like here at Pioneer Christian Hospital, that Jesus will be here, he'll be central, and people will just be drawn to come till it's overflowing. And that the roof will be ripped off and the access to everyone to get to Jesus will be there. And sometimes you need help. To get to Jesus that's the role of those friends and it's our role to bring the patients and the people who bring the patients to Jesus feet we don't force anyone to to pray or to convert to Christianity that's not what we're here for but we're here to follow Jesus example and to treat the illness and to take care of the physical problems that people have and at the same time introduce them to Jesus and to the hope that he offers so we pray with every patient who's here and um, our hope would be that we could say get up pick up your bed you're now physically healed and also your sins are forgiven if people come in and seek Jesus for their true healing we want everyone to experience complete healing body soul and spirit and we find that in Jesus Christ and that's our goal at Pioneer Christian Hospital La Chapelle. As we said, this is the heart of the ministry. We do offer Sunday services, daily chapels for the patients. We have a vibrant, active chaplaincy program with a head chaplain and then other volunteer chaplains that come in and share with the patients every day. And actually, as we peek in the chapel, our head chaplain is in the middle of giving some counseling and some advice and prayers with some people. So we'll just take a look at the chapel. The chapel do doubles uh, as a chapel and also a waiting room for the lab for outpatient consultation. <laughs> and people come and, and work on their sermons, pastors, and other people. Um, 
study God's Word here, so it's a great place to meet. We have the hospital laboratory here with the blood bank. This is our region's blood bank with uh, 20, 20 uh, units of blood at, at almost all times, all the different uh, blood types. Our lab technician uh, makes sure that the transfusions are done in a secure manner. This is what saves so many lives, 500 lives every year, through this blood bank service, which services not only our hospital, but the whole region. Uh, our laboratory is the most advanced in the region, uh, though we can always use help to update some of the equipment uh, and, and improve the testing, the range of tests that we're able to provide. Thank you. We have ultrasound and x-ray imaging studies available, uh, and, and we'll just take a look here uh, in the x-ray department in a minute. So, somebody's getting breath. So here we have the ultrasound and x-ray imaging, medical imaging department with Papa Alpha. Who uh, does all of the studies for us? We also do EKGs in this room. We have the reception where medical records are kept and uh, charts and all that are kept in here, and also the patients can take for the treatments that they're receiving. And this is the pharmacy for the day use pharmacy for the hospital where all the patients that get a prescription, their families can come and, and get what's needed for their hospital care. We also service outpatient prescriptions for our own patients here at the pharmacy. We use all generic uh, medicines on the WHO list of essential medicines. This is uh, our emergency room. It also doubles like an ICU for the most critical patients. They will come in here and stabilize before they get admitted to the hospital. It's normally full today. There's nobody here. But um, I'm glad nobody's definitely sick right now. Thank you. And here we have uh, the consultation room where the outpatient uh, patients come to be seen by the consultant. And then it also doubles as our call room for the nurse on call, uh, where they examine it and treat patients right here. And they have an emergency stock of medicine 24 hours a day that's available for the most common problem to get started on here. My yeah. mother. Hello. Here we have the observation room where patients will stay up to 24 hours after uh, they arrive until they're stable and then we will admit them to the wards. So this uh, hospital was built from a former communist youth camp and so the cabins have become all the patient wards and the different services of the hospital. And here we have a couple of cabins that became maternity and postpartum care. Here we have the maternity, and they're doing training at the clinic here today. The midwife will stay here at night and take calls. And this is the exam table for the woman in pregnancy. And through here we have the labor and delivery group. There are upwards of 500 uh, babies, 500, 600 babies are born every year at, in our maternity unit with two LER. Uh, beds and different equipment for resuscitating the newborn. So, ici nous avons Mama Lillian qui travaille en maternité. This is Mama Lillian who works in maternity, one of our uh, birth assistants. So, come on to the cafeteria. Here we have our hospital cafeteria and this is where uh, we have a lady who cooks the meals for the patients every day. She also cooks 
um, some things, some bread or has tea or things so the hospital employees can get their lunch or their coffee break here. Um, so amazing big pots of rice and beans come out of, um, as you can see, she's got really big cooking pots and cooks over a wood fire and comes up with really amazing meals. And then the patients just come at the at midday and receive their food through that open window. And if you want to supplement your meal, you just climb a guava tree and help yourself to some guavas. There's lots of fruit trees here. Um, in Congo, we have guava trees and orange and safu and mango, papaya. And so here we have pediatrics ward with eight beds and uh, not a lot of kids because we discharged them all yesterday. <laughs> Monday's always a big day to discharge. There's not a single patient here. Uh. Well, there's one right there, but they're outside right now. Already on the well to the road to recovery. So everybody's better. And it really is it's not usually like this. We often have 10, 12 kids in the eight beds. So um, it's a blessing that people are healed today. Welcome to Radio Sango Kitoko, a community radio station located here on the grounds of Pioneer Christian Hospital. We love to have the involvement of local churches and, and pastors, leaders, and then also healthcare officials uh, from the department. We talk about public health, we talk about the Bible, we are happy to worship God on air when churches have to be closed because of quarantine, for example. So this, this radio station has been a great outreach to the community, especially also during quarantine. We had school at home, we had the teachers, we mm -hmm. brought them in, and we brought sample students, and we had up to five people in the studio at a time recording and broadcasting live as kids raise their hand to answer the questions. It was just a great time that they, because of that, uh, the kids in our region did really well on the state exams this year. And uh, we just love to be of service to the community through this radio station. Tell us more about some of the programming as we, can we go in and see? So. Sure. So uh, this is the studio, and Recorded studio. we do live programs, and we also do recording studios. Right now, they're live on air, so we need to be quiet. So right here, they're on, a, on air studio, and this is the recording studio where we have choirs and other groups come to register to record their program, and then a live on air studio is right next door through the plexiglass windows. Okay, so here we are in the, in the operating room uh, or the operating building, surgical building for the hospital and we have the recovery and pre-op room and recovery. Behind you is the sterilization um, area where we sterilize instruments. And we have the changing room uh, we have a changing room. I can't do what you. What? So we go down through here to the OR. And uh, we have our scrub sink here on the right uh, where we get masked up and ready for surgery. Scrub sink. And then OR number two. The first OR we use for. Uh, Surgery. It has a skylight, so we can operate even if the power goes out on rare occasion. But uh, it's always kept ready to go. And we have our number two. This is our main OR where we refer to people in larger cases. And uh, we have electrocautery and suction and anesthesia machine uh, appropriate for Africa from uh, Glastoven. Um, in in the UK, and we uh, really enjoy our time in the OR. <laughs> OR number three is for specialty surgery. We do have an endoscope and an operating microscope for eye surgery, cataract, and glaucoma surgery, all done here. Thank you. And Mary Rose is uh, the director, uh, the nursing supervisor for the OR. So, chief. 
What? Oh, I don't see him. It doesn't work. It's going to work. We have an axe working. We hope to fix it. So as you can see, we've got a great view of the hospital, and it's not set up in a traditional way like you might be used to hospitals, all one building with many floors or wards. The history of this hospital is it was built in the 80s during time of communism. Congo was a communist country, and they had camps set up where they would bring young children and teach them and of the doctrines of communism, teach them very strongly and very well in these camps. And this was built as the pioneer camp. That's the name, um, the young pioneers were the young children being trained in communism. And this was built as a youth camp for that. So our chapel was the amphitheater. And you see all these little buildings are cabins that were made for camp. We've, we've come from the OR, that was the cafeteria. So it's 17 acres. I believe the wall is a mile long that surrounds here. Mm -hmm. So you get your steps in when you come, going from building to building. And we took what we had because in 19, two, excuse me, 2001, the government of the Congo released this land to be made into a Christian hospital. And they, ha they knew full well that we are planning to transform it into a Christian hospital where the good news of Jesus is shared and they were fine with that. So what a blessing that a, a place that was created really to teach that God doesn't exist and that the state is supreme, but Congo has changed their thinking and the hearts of the people have changed and now this is a place where Jesus is, is shared and the healing is done in Jesus' name. So as you can see, the, the cabins, we have maternity and two cabins there, and then there's um, the wards where you have your men's ward and your women's ward, your pediatrics ward, your post-op wards, maternity. Um, Community bathhouse. Yeah, so it's, as, as you're going on this tour with us, we're walking around a lot. It's a lot of outside, and you can see a little bit of, rain here. We are in the tropical rainforest. We're in the rainy season, so we stepped inside for a bit while it was raining and now it stopped. So you can be sure to appreciate all the lush greenery around us as we're here at Pioneer Christian Hospital. And I want to share something as we head this way. You can look to the right, you'll see the technical services for the hospital where we have storage of medical supplies and equipment and broken equipment that we are planning to fix and um, a, a workshop and a carpenter shop and a powerhouse and solar panels. We try to be as energy in, in it, um, independent as possible, so we try to generate as much power from the sun. Since we're close to the equator, we get a lot of solar energy. We try to channel that and we made that into a carport over there with all the panels above. And we run on solar power most uh, 75% of the day. When we're doing surgery, we do start the generator to charge up the batteries more and to also provide air conditioning for the surgeon. <laughs> um, it's, this is a, often a neglected part of, of hospitals in Africa, and we feel that it's uh, worthwhile to invest a lot in the infrastructure and the provision of 24-hour electricity and clean running uh, well water throughout the compound, which we do have 24 hours a day. That makes a big difference when you're trying to prevent infection and to provide good, clean uh, drinking water to the community. We do end up spending a lot of time maintaining the ground, um, but it does give good work for people, and it also provides us a nice, clean, like park-like space in which to live and work. take a look at a couple of the wards here. Um, these are the surgical wards that we have. Uh, we call it surgery mix. It's a mixture of men and women where the more uh, post-op patients are. And then once they're re completely recovered, then they'll be transferred to the men and or women's ward for the post-op patients. So we have a couple of friends.
friends here, Jean Pierre, had, had an accident and broke his leg. We were able to cast him yesterday. And our friend Emil uh, was injured also in a motorcycle accident a number of years ago. But we are blessed to be able to have this place where we, we also keep track of patient records here. It serves as an uh, office for the surgical work and a treatment room for doing all the dressing changes. And I'll draw your attention to the drawings on the walls. Um, you'll see in each ward there's a painting, a mural on the wall with a Bible verse. It's in Lingala. That's the national language here. So that's just one way that we seek to integrate uh, spiritual encouragement amongst physical healing, just presenting Bible verses and scenes of peace and, and calmness. And the hospital also has a radio station. It's 106.3 RSK Radio Sango Kitoko. And you can see the radio station straight ahead and the and the 300 foot radio tower that was that was installed and we use the radio station to broadcast public service announcements health teaching as well as reading the bible on air and having the local pastors present sermons and teachings we play christian music and the patients really enjoy having uh, the radio station, they have their radio right at their bedside and they can enjoy Christian broadcasting almost 24 hours a day. Um, depending on our power Depending supply. on how much power there is. And here we have one of the post-op wards. This one is the men's ward. Just a couple patients right now, but uh, open ward with eight beds and the family members often stay with patient, so usually one or two um, family members will stay with the patient and meet all of their normal everyday to day, everyday needs. As is common in many African hospitals, the patient caregivers are responsible for washing the patient's clothes and, and preparing meals and doing a lot of patient, basic patient care. Um, the hospital for a, a year and a half or so now has been able to start a nutrition program, a feeding program. So we do provide two meals. It's, we provide it in one serving, but it's enough food that they can eat over two meals for every patient who's hospitalized. And that makes a big difference. Um, if you're well nourished, you can heal quicker and more completely. So we do, um, that is a, is a great part of it, but patients still uh, will supplement what they have. They'll make their own food and we provide shelters where they can do that. Can you show us one of those? Sure. Oh, sorry. <laughs> so it's behind the, for this word and for that word, there's, it's just a little enclosure. And, um, you know, when you think of remodeling your kitchen, you might think differently than what we're seeing here. It's, it's basically three bricks and a, and a pot, and they make Everything. amazing meals with that. Seriously, three bricks and a pot. And, and they cook, with. and they're More protected charcoal. from the rain, and so they supplement what the hospital gives um, with their own cooking. We also mentioned that we do have some private rooms that are a little bit nicer, and those are for extra cost uh, if people want a private room or if we have to isolate patients. So those, we have two buildings uh, with private rooms over here. And we have a nursing school that is dormant at this time. We're waiting for God to provide nursing educators to help us restart the nursing training program. Uh, we have had four promotions already uh, from the nursing school, but we want to resume that as soon as possible uh, over, over there, the green buildings. There's also an eye clinic with very advanced and sophisticated eye care. Um, at one point, we were even doing laser surgery here in Infondo in the middle of the jungle. Oh, my God. 